Hi everyone, this is Real World Audio again, and let's get technical today. So in the previous video, I showed you this uh, example of this amplifier, but let us see how did I find it, what it is, and uh, and in addition, I will share with you that website that you can browse instead of binging on meaningless uh, sound snippets which don't really tell you anything uh, I will do a video on why and uh, because it's it's really subjective it depends highly on your playback equipment whether you like the sound you hear or not so before we go into that in the next video let's just show you where I found this um, so there is a secret website it it's the address is tomo.fine.to so if you look for that it's uh, the web page for for valve's world so they had this website up for a long time and then they migrated to a new server and it crashed so i couldn't find it for many years but uh, a few years ago i found it again Unfortunately, they have not re recovered most of their materials, but it is a absolutely amazing resource. This is a Japanese uh, gentleman and he does uh, amplifier uh, rebuilds and modifications and he builds new amps and preamps from scratch as well for orders. And his work is just fabulous and he publishes uh, schematics and details. However, all of, all of this website is in uh, Japanese, so you can use Google Translate and, and translate it to English. So this is how it is for me as well here. And when you look at the, the links, uh, then you go to... And then you can click on stuff and find uh, lots of things, lots of lots of things. So let's go back to this amplifier you have seen this in the previous video so now let's see what this is so this is a luxman a3600 amplifier and he has repaired this amplifier for a customer and let's see what did he do to refurbish this absolute beauty of an amp uh, so, so he also installed some wood panels on the sides and, and put very nice VU meters. So it's just absolute beauty. So this is a, a 6550 push-pull lamp. So you can also use KT88 tubes in it. Uh, it's, KT88 is the, sli the slightly robust, more robust version of the 6550. Um, and uh, let's see it's top view and there is a 6 AQ8 uh, driver and sometimes the translation is a bit funny uh, switching between UL and triple operation means uh, uh, triode mode so you can switch between ultra linear and triode mode and when you look at his amps how re he rebuilds them he always puts that switch into pentode so you can switch between ultra linear and uh, triode mode and this is what i have been doing since scratch and i can recommend this to everyone because even if you have a push pull amplifier if you run it in triode mode it sounds so close to a single ended triode that uh, most often if you do not see what is playing you would think that it's a single ended triode amplifier playing and if it's in an ultra linear mode then it sounds more like a push pull pentode and that's the same that it is also true for single ended amplifiers if you have a, a single ended pentode then you would think that it's a push pull pentode that that's how it sounds so actually the the pentode mode or ultra linear mode which is also a pentode mode uh, or something uh, closer to pentode than triode anyway i don't want to get technical there 
but basically pentode and ultralinear mode sounds like push-pull pentodes regardless the fact whether it's a push-pull or single antidamp and uh, a triode mode amplifier sounds like a single ended triode regardless whether it's single ended or push-pull and these things which I said they become a reality if the parts of the amplifier are of high enough quality and the topology is clear enough because if you mock up these two then well of course you can uh, you can say bye bye to to these pure sounds and then it doesn't matter whether it's in a triode mode or pentode mode you are going to hear some mushy sound no matter what so with that in mind, just an idea for everyone, if you have a pentode amp, then just make sure to have a triode switch uh, installed in it. And uh, for that you will need a little bit of more education, how to do that and when can you do that. And of course, if you have a triode switch in your amp, do not switch it while the amp is operating, turn it off and then switch it and then turn it back on, for safety's sake. Okay, so he also said that between the rectifier tube and the capacitor he installed the heat shield. Can we see that? Let's go back. Right there, you see that? So there's the rectifier tube and there is uh, the input capacitor and because it produces a lot of heat and he didn't want to cook the capacitor because the capacitor dies much faster if it's subject to a lot of heat he put a, a piece of aluminum heat sink in between the two so it reflects the heat back and it collects the heat instead of your capacitor collecting all of the heat radiating from the rectifier and when you look at the amp here in the center this is our power transformer this, has, this plugs into the mains and transforms your line voltage into whatever voltage your amp can use and uh, and it has the uh, rectifier tube I think maybe, maybe it might be like two rectifier tubes we will see in the schematic what's going on but normally you have this rectifier tube and, and here that looks like a choke so there is a choke filtering in the power supply you always want uh, uh, I would say it's always preferable to have a choke uh, to to filter your power because that gives a much more life and speed and energy to the sound provided that the choke is low DCR so the DC resistance of the choke is low then it can provide tremendous extra energy because when you have a power supply, in the power supply, uh, you can filter out the, uh, the line hum by either using a, a, a resistor and capacitor combination or an, a choke and a capacitor combination. And uh, the advantage of the choke is not just that it behaves as a really big resistor, but also that it stores energy so a resistor it just limits the energy that your tubes can receive but if you have a choke then it stores energy and it can supply that extra demand whenever the tubes need them so that's also another advantage for a choke but if your choke value is too high for especially for power tube section and dcr is high as well then uh, if there's a high energy demand it takes too long for the choke to charge up and it just has too much inertia in it to provide that energy for the tube so that's why you need to choose your choke uh, relatively carefully for best results let's see the inside of the amp it's absolutely magnificent so you see this is the underbelly of the transformer and we have a rectifier tube yes so you see that's also a rectifier tube uh, and uh, they they are feeding the capacitor there so you see these two uh, rectifiers are connected together and we feel there's the ground 
this is the ground coming to that ground uh, ground bus over there and that's there's a resistor hooking us up to the input choke to the input filter so let's see i don't have my glasses so i hope i'm showing you guys the right stuff probably i am and then here you have one output transformer another output transformer and uh, we have the power tubes here the other section so one push-pull pair another push-pull pair and uh, let's see and here we have the uh, face splitter tubes and here we have the input tube and here those looks like the meters and 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 those are either like bias pots or volume control pots we'll find it out from our schematics down below and here these are nice uh, ground bars ground buses that uh, provide a really nice uh, low impedance ground and the fast lane for the electrons to travel between the tubes uh, let's go and also here i will show you something additional that when you look at the parse selection he uses pretty simple and very cheap uh, uh, plastic capacitors there uh, those are also like really cheap nichicon capacitors some cheap uh, film caps if you have this amp that's also some very basic capacitor if you change and upgrade these so instead of these guys here you you use like anasil make tools and instead of here you put some uh, nice films if you want to put something cheap and good is like the obligato capacitors then you will really bump up the sound of this amp a notch or more so in this present configuration it will not sound in triode mode as uh, as triode as a good triode amp but if you upgrade these capacitors then in triode mode you would not tell the difference between this and the single ended triode amp in regards to naturalness of mid-range and, and beauty of mid-range so now looking at the schematics let me see let me adjust my screen a little bit here okay so we want to see the entire schematics so what we see here this is just showing for us the signal section so we do not see the power supply uh, on, on tube schematics usually left side is always the input side and then we see the input tube and then we see the phase splitter section and then we see the push pull output section and the output transformer and uh, we will see below the power supply as well and usually people obsess with schematics about the power section, the power tube section. And whenever you are binging online and reading reviews, when you are looking at the amplifiers, everyone is talking about which is the best ER34 amplifier or what is your favorite power tube, like a KT66 or KT150 or a, or a 300B. However, what is really neglected and why you really have to stop binging on just these bloody reviews and get some real knowledge under the hood is that uh, what really defines an amplifier is the low signal section. So the selection of your input tube has a bigger impact on the sound than the selection of your power tube. I say it once more. The selection of your input tube has a bigger impact on the sound than the selection of the output tube so that's why when you are looking for your dream amplifier uh, stop obsessing with the power tube it's good if you have a power tube that you like its sound but you need to pay really attention what is that amplifier that you absolutely love what is the input tube that it uses or if you have like five different amplifiers that you absolutely love their sound find out which is the input tube and in the input and face splitter section what kind of vacuum tubes they use 
and there is a good chance that there will be a couple of the tubes which are overlapping between them let's say 6SN7 tube like three of the five uses that tube then it's a good indication that you really like the sonic signature of 6SN7 and it's probably contributing as much to the sound or even more than the output tube that you are using and going one step extra beyond that what really really determines the sound is the interaction between your power tube and the input tube and if it's push pull design then face splitter so all three of them have to mesh together and have to work together so for example if you have a favorite amplifier let's say an audio note then look at what is the tube complement for that amplifier and if you cannot afford oops sorry that amplifier because maybe it costs like thirty thousand dollars then look for for uh, for someone who can build you an amp using those tubes or build up your own lore to to find the schematics or maybe the schematics of that amplifier that you like and then build up your knowledge on how to be able to find the other parts that will make that topology complete so i will not go more into the detail because we are already past well past the limit of most people's uh, retention and and probably i have lost most of you by this time so thank you for tuning in and we'll continue from here bye bye